All right, welcome back for another week of Doc Talks. We got tres hombres today. We got Dr. Couples and the new Dr. Wood. He's going to kind of uh, get us going with some uh, healthy shoulders for swimmers. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit more uh, on his expertise, um, but introduce yourself. Give us a little background on you. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Garrett Wood. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on myself. I've been practicing chiropractic now for roughly about six years. I came on to Elevate now. I've been on with Elevate for, let's see, going on just about three months now. Yeah. That's exciting. Really three it's, months it, already? It's going quick. fast. Quick, quick. That's crazy. <laughs> Time's running and having flies. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're getting into swimming today. Uh, a little bit of background with myself with swimming. I actually was a Division I collegiate swimmer at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Go Scarlet and Gray. <laughs> but my uh, specialties were in freestyle and backstroke. I was a sprinter, so uh, sprint freestyle, sprint backstroke, 50 yard free, 100 yard free, 100 yard backstroke. I was all about uh, getting in, getting out, and making sure it was done. Love it. <laughs> as fast as possible, right? Absolutely. So we're talking a little bit about freestyle and then uh, we're talking about uh, long axis rotation. Give us a little bit more information on that. Okay, well, what we're doing is we're just keeping uh, healthy shoulders just down to one stroke today. So we're gonna be dealing with the freestyle or the crawl stroke for uh, those people who are not familiar with swimming. Now, uh, with this, there's a breakdown in your different strokes, whether it's freestyle, whether it's backstroke, whether it's breaststroke or butterfly, uh, two strokes you're dealing with long axis rotation and two strokes you're dealing with short axis rotation. Uh, what we're dealing with today is long axis rotation, so that would be your freestyle and your backstroke. With that long axis, uh, basically picture yourself having like a barbecue skewer going straight down through your head and down through your feet, and that is the axis that you are rotating on when you are swimming. Uh, with freestyle in particular, we're going to be doing a little bit of a breakdown of what it's going to take to make sure that the shoulders are staying healthy. Uh, now, it's not necessarily working on just the strengthening of the shoulders, but it also can be dealing with the different areas of the body that can be causing potential issues coming up to the shoulders. Uh, first thing we're going to kind of break down is just the anatomy of the shoulder, real brief uh, introduction of some of the structures and then some potential injuries that can go along with those. Um, we look at the ro rotator cuff muscle, a lot of people, or muscles I should say, um, a lot of people uh, have heard of those because they're commonly torn, commonly injured, um, and uh, it's very prevalent in swimming for sure. Um, Absolutely. The AC joint, um, our AC joint is a, it's a, a two bones that come together right over the top of the shoulder. Um, that can also cause some problems with uh, overhead movement. Um, and then you can talk about the labrum, uh, biceps, a lot of stuff. Oh yes, absolutely. But um, uh, just uh, giving it, give it a breakdown right now, uh, especially with a lot of the injuries that do occur up in the shoulders for swimmers. Uh, a lot of it happens to deal with uh, subacromial impingement, what they call it, or basically what they do is that narrowing of that little area, basically where the acromion, or the top of the scapula, that shoulder blade, sits uh, right on top of the humerus, and you actually have the area right between there where you actually have a couple muscles, uh, a couple muscles, a couple tendons, plus you have a nice bursa sac that actually goes underneath there. Well, with a lot of swimmers, uh, especially those ones that have been swimming for a really long time, is you'll see impingement at this area, just with that overhead rotational motion. And when you just start getting impingement in that area, just due to a lot of inflammation, then you can start having those issues of pain that can surface right around the, the front of the shoulder in that area. Oh, all right. So, um, other things that are in that area, bicep tendon, um, there's some nerves around there, but uh, all of those are, are irritated with the, the, maybe the lack of technique or poor technique. Um, and that's why we have an expert to talk about some of the technique uh, that we want to see first. This is, this is good technique first, um, things that will hopefully make a, a swimmer more 
uh, have have more longevity, right? You know, oh, we want to have more longevity. We want to have uh, we want to talk about technique that's going to drive uh, more time being in the pool, less time seeing one of us, right? Um, so, uh, go. Let's let's talk about some of the uh, the technique driven flaws that you've. Or I'm sorry, the technique that you want to see first, and then we'll talk about some flaws. Okay. Well, the big thing that you want to be able to see for technique when it comes down to freestyle is you want to make sure that you're working on a proper full body rotation. Uh, a lot of the times when you see people that are relatively new to swimming or they're just using it as cross training, what they're doing is they're doing more of a lot of upper body rotation or more of just dependent on the shoulders with just kicking the legs and keeping the body relatively flat. When you do that, it has the tendency to make you force those shoulders into uh, going through a lot more uh, rotation, a lot more flexion extension just to try and get a higher arc with the arm. And when you're trying to get a higher arc with the arm, that's when you start seeing a lot more of that impingement, just or more irritation coming around through those areas. Uh, when you're actually breaking down the rotation, like we said, working with that long axis, you want to make sure that you're working the rotation coming down through the core, all through the hips, and naturally the shoulders are going to follow. So when we're actually breaking down technique, there's a couple different phases of freestyle stroke that we're going to be break, breaking down. One is going to be driving in at the top of the stroke, which basically if you take me into a standing position, this is where I'm at with the top of the stroke when I drive down and into the water at the top of the stroke. Naturally, you see the arms in a lot of flexion. Naturally, you see that the arm is it deducted towards the body. So it's going to, you're going to be getting a lot of internal rotation at the shoulder. So these are areas that can cause a lot of impingement and a lot of trouble. The next portion we're dealing with is coming with the pull through. Now, when we're looking at the pull through, we're coming down straight down towards the bottom of the pool with a little bit of elbow bend. So this is what it's going to look like when we're actually pulling down through the stroke. Now, the main muscle that helps initiate the propulsion for this is called your latissimus dorsi muscle, or latissimus dorsi, however you wish to pronounce it. Now, this is going to be causing a lot of internal rotation in the shoulder and, ex and driving through and extending the arm back. That is the main propulsion factor in that area. And it's also helping to initiate, basically what we're doing is we're doing the exit at the bottom of the stroke. And once we finish with the exit at the bottom of the stroke, then we're actually looking towards a recovery. Now, this tends to be a big problem for a lot of people in their recovery. When we're actually looking at a person's recovery, we want to be able to see a recovery that's coming up and over the top, or this would have looked like if you were looking at me from the bottom of the pool. With this, this is where the body rotation is really important because when you're trying to force more of a recovery without much body rotation, this is going to cause a lot of irritation in the shoulder. You're going to be driving the elbow back towards the spine and you're going to be getting a lot of activation of these muscles here, whether it's the activation with the traps. Uh, activation with the rhomboid muscles, trying to get that arm all the way out as far out of the water as you can so you're not dragging it along the surface. When we're focusing on that body rotation, naturally we want to see close to about that 45 degree rotation coming up and out. So when we've actually rotated up and out of the water, this is what it actually looks like. My elbow is actually more to the side my shoulder isn't so far drawn back, so I'm not getting as much impingement on the shoulder or as much irritation onto the shoulder. How about head position? Okay. Now, when you're trying to break down, the reason why head position is important for the shoulders is because with your head position, naturally that's going to affect how the pitch of your body is. So. If your head position is a little more up and you're actually looking towards the wall, what you're going to be doing is you're going to end up dropping your hips or you're going to force a lot of contraction coming down through some of the paraspinal muscles and the upper traps. This can cause a lot more irritation around the base of the neck and it can inhibit the range of motion that the shoulders are going to be going through. 
Okay, so head position, look at shoulder position. Looks like we've, we've hit body rotation. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all, we saw the pros and the cons. We saw the both goods and the bads. Um, and then lastly, it looks like we have, we have to kind of break down kicking. If there's errors or there's, uh, um, let's look at the, the, like a good kick compared to a bad kick. Right. Now, especially with freestyle, when you're actually looking at a good flutter kick, what you're doing is you're looking at a consistent, smaller kick. You're not looking at a big kick when you're rotating the body from side to side. Naturally, when your kick starts to get big, when you rotate to, say, your dominant side where you're taking a breath, you rotate and you let the leg scissor kick and come far apart. What that's going to do is that's going to ruin the balance of the stroke. The stroke's going to start to tilt, teeter from side to side, and then you're having to alter your pull pattern. Well, if you're having to alter your pull pattern, then you're going to be sweeping the arm in and out when you're pulling through as opposed to a more efficient stroke of pulling down with the bent elbow and finishing past the hip. Now, if you're having a lot more internal and external rotation over the course of, say, just a normal swim practice, it's going to be pretty bad. Uh, when you look at a competitive swimmer, or let's just take uh, your average competitive swimmer. Uh, they're usually putting in probably about, mm, say about 5,000, in between 5,000 to 5,500 yards per practice. When you actually do the breakdown on how many strokes that they're taking per length, you're looking at, uh, over the course of a practice, anywhere between uh, 1,500 to usually upwards of close to 2,000 revolutions per arm. That's a lot. Wow. <laughs> so, with the, with the kicks, you basically want to create the legs as almost like a fin, just like a, a fish. A fish doesn't have a tail that's splaying apart. Yeah. Well, actually, interestingly enough, I don't know if you knew this, but so fish have like lateral movement of the fins, but like a whale mm -hmm. is more mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah. It has to do with the um, lack of sagittal plane motion with fish versus uh I just read that. Interesting. <laughs> are, you but, at, are, you, are you vet tech, maybe? Or is it, is it, uh, it's actually in a spine book, believe it or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have to tell you about it later. Um, but you want it to be close together so you are more efficient, and when you spread apart, you don't necessarily have that efficient. When you get to a bigger line. scissor kick, naturally, you're going to have to balance someplace else with the arm, whether that's sweeping the arm out and then pulling it back in. But like I said, when we're working with that long axis, you don't want to be reaching over and across that okay. long axis. You want to be pulling down to just keep a more efficient stroke. Because essentially you're kind of, you're beelining your body forward in like as straight of a, a direction as possible. So anything that creates deviation from that is going to make you less efficient, less fast, potentially. Can lead, that, to lead to problems. It can lead to problems. It can lead to more revolutions over time. It can lead to more stressors coming through other muscles, especially rotator cuff muscles. And then uh, basically you're just having those issues with over fatiguing those muscles and that's what leads to that injury. And weren't you talking about uh, the other day uh, turbulence though too? Doesn't that oh, create, yes. create um, more turbulence? When you're swimming relatively flat in the water, you're going to see yourself creating a little bit more turbulence in the water as opposed to when you're having a more efficient rotating stroke, it's going to create a lot less turbulence in that water. Okay. And so looking at shoulder, I mean, we have a really long lever arm here, right? So when our fingertips are as far away from our body, if we start getting like that turbulence and shake through there, it's probably, I mean, it's going to be a lot harder, like you said, fatigue-wise on muscles. So, I mean, I could definitely see as far, when we're reaching really far up overhead, if we're getting a lot of shake and a lot of turbulence, 2,000 uh, revolutions <laughs> per practice, it's a lot of work on that stuff. So looking at efficiency, that probably goes pretty far down um, and then you know that's when we see most of our injuries occur when efficiency goes down and load goes up right? absolutely um, so cool I mean that's I mean so now we need to figure out uh, a little bit more maybe how we need how we can start uh, implementing a little bit healthier stroke a little bit more efficient stroke um, and I know you've, you've done uh, some work with guys and uh, common things that you'll give these types of swimmers would be what? What kind of stuff would you try to correct if you if they had these flaws, say in the shoulder, in the torso, um, or in like the in the actual arm movement? Well, the big big thing is first, especially if we're going to be if we're going to be trying to get them out of pain, if they've been having some pain going on, and and by the way, this also goes out to some of the docs that also may be watching, 
and you're, you actually have a swimmer and you're checking their shoulders and you happen to go through and check out the laxity in their shoulders and you're finding you're getting a positive sulcus sign where basically you kind of find a little bit of a divot coming into the shoulder when you're checking, checking their shoulders for laxity. When you see a sulcus sign in swimmers, don't freak out. The vast majority of swimmers are going to be displaying a sulcus sign just due to the ligament laxity going on. But especially if they're dealing with a lot of pain, right away you're going to want to decrease the load first and foremost. And you're actually going to want to go back and break down and just analyze their technique of what they're going through. Once, once you start building on that technique, little corrective things that you'll be looking at, especially with going through the shoulder, is you want to be able to go ahead and see whether or not they're having issues with their scapula not being properly stabilized. Uh, that can be a common issue with those people that are more overworked. And then what they do is they start losing that stability. Once they lose that stability, it just puts more pressure on the inside of the shoulder, and that's when you're starting to see more of that irritation. Hmm. Okay. So I think it's all kind of driven, like let's, let's think like center out. So uh, the torso, we want to see this rotation, we want to see nice rotation. Um, and if we're rigid, if we're stiff, uh, we can't create that rotation in the spine. Um, what's something that you've, that you've given uh, a swimmer to help with uh, creating this, you know, more rotation in the spine? Especially with when you're looking at uh, more rotation in the spine, naturally you're just even looking at simple working on thoracic rotation or uh, uh, one that I've worked on where you can actually work on strengthening the shoulder and working on that thoracic rotation is especially like a banded exercise, which you're actually going to be looking at a bow exercise where you'd actually be anchoring off, uh, you'd be anchoring off like a stretch cord and you can just be working from one side to the other. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working on drawing back past the chest and then drawing back in. And then you're just gonna be making sure that you're actually working on both sides to where you're actually working the draw back on the shoulder, yeah. which is gonna be that scapula stabilizer. There we go. All right, so we're gonna pretend that this is an anchor point for the time being. Grab here, grab here, there you go. So we're gonna grab right here and we're gonna pull and draw back. Oh, and it didn't break. Yes. That's what I was Success. Oh, it would break. <laughs> But what we're going to do is we're going to draw back and what we're going to do is we're going to secure the shoulder back and rotate the spine and then draw it back in. Well, I'm just waiting for it. I'm waiting. Well, I'm like, that's going to come and hit me. And that is the reason why I, I saw, don't point I saw, towards I saw, these I saw guys. Grab good, so I saw pretty good. I felt pretty safe. Yeah. I like that. So, um, you know, when you are reaching... Uh, you're doing opposite motion with the other arm, so I think that's, that's really a good translation to the sport. Um, you know, you, you, you reach and then obviously you go through your, it's a recovery stroke, right? You're going through there, um, you know, but you're pulling your shoulder kind of out of the way, getting like good uh, thoracic rotation. You're kind of working on almost all three of those things at the same time, which is kind of cool. Um, I can see why that's, uh, that's helpful for all three of those areas, thoracic spine, scap stability, and getting the, sh the whole movement of the arm kind of out of the way. Um, how about uh, like a, a cuff, maybe a cuff warm-up or something that you've done to, to make sure that those muscles are, are feeling good to get in the water? A lot of times, especially some of the simpler routines to go through, uh, right before you even getting in the pool, is basically just going through uh, similar to shoulder cars. So basically what you're doing is you're just bringing the arms up and you're just actually working small rotations in and small rotations back and then actually working the rotations just a little bit bigger. So a little bit bigger with those shoulder cars, a little bit bigger coming back and then you could work on some of the internal and external rotations especially for the rotator cuff muscles just keeping it nice and simple it doesn't have to be weighted it's just going through the motions and getting that muscle tissue activated. That's it's simple but effective, right? I mean, we want to make sure that we're, we're not giving people too much uh, complexity when they're doing warm-ups and stuff like that, so I, you know, I like that too. Um, so we have, uh, we did th uh, thoracic or torso rotation. Uh, we've warmed up the cuff. 
um, and then I guess putting it all together, you're you know look kind of at the whole stroke maybe going through slow. It's a we we tend to call it a, a he said a car, uh, a controlled articular rotation. Um, we're trying to just find our end ranges of our body, um, so we go through as big a range of motion at uh, the shoulder joint itself and see where we're at, see if we're if we're moving well, um, and then if we're not. Um, then we need to spend a little bit more time warm that up or we know that we maybe can't go 100% that day You know, we have to drop back uh, the intensity a little bit um, I know that you're itching to, to go after one one move for you know Maybe if we're going if we see a, a swimmer and, and he can't create internal rotation um, mm -hmm. So at the shoulder well, what would you what would what would Zach do? WWZD w -W <laughs> We're gonna get we're gonna get some bracelets <laughs> so the the big thing, and, and as you were demonstrating the stroke, I was you know thinking. Um, I, I think it comes back to restoring rotation, like yeah. that's that's the name of the game because a lot of the the compensations that you were mentioning or demonstrating, like oh when you you know you get some some pinching here. Well, if you're getting that, the chances are you're probably not driving adequate rotation through through the thorax and rib cage. So is there a way that we can reinforce that. Well, yes, there is. And if That's only I had a doc who I attempt to punish on a weekly hey. basis. <laughs> you, need, you need someone else. <laughs> help help me another out. one. Oh, man, <laughs> uh, but but one that I like would be getting on hands and knees. I'm gonna have my main man Kyle in a hands and knees position. And of course, I'm gonna want him to tuck his hips per usual. That looks good there. And then, actually, I'm glad I'm working on this with you because you had a hard time with it. I did. Meeting. So I want this to go flat. And you want to push your chest straight up like so. So you don't want to crunch. Go ahead and crunch, Kyle. So like that is not going to allow for adequate rotation through the rib cage and the thorax because the way we're going to create it is through a breath, okay? So push up here. Now, this doesn't look like Kyle's rotating at all, and you would be right if you're thinking that. So an easy way to drive early stage rotation would be to lift one hand up and have your hand just like so. So now what I'm doing is essentially, it's, it's very similar to the move that you were doing, he's reaching forward with his right arm and he's pulling back with the left to in this case, drive rotation through his trunk to the left even though he's stationary. But the way we'll get him to rotate, go ahead and push up a little bit more, Kyle, is to breathe. So go ahead and breathe in that position. Get a nice exhale, get it all out. You can exhale better than that. Oh, come on, there we go. Awesome. Keep a little bit of tension in your abs. Go ahead and breathe in. And that's going to be the key to drive a low level amount of rotation here. Especially if you got someone who uh, potentially is winging through the scaps. So if you're that type of person, as you raise overhead, you see the inner part of your shoulder blade flopping all around. This is a money move to help reinforce that. And that's fairly common in, in swimmers. And even down in that position when I was taking those breaths in, it's like this hand's not, I'm not actively moving it, but you can, I mean, it, it like starts to mm -hmm. lift up to my left side. So uh, yeah. that expansion that we're talking about, that breath in, breath out, it, it creates that subtle movement. Um, and I think that's, I think that's really important to understand. It's, it can be a really subtle movement, but that'll initiate, that'll initiate the thought process or your body will start to react to that once yeah. you've, once you've made those small, small changes. Yeah. And it gives you the basically the, the options or the positions to be able to, to get to something that's a little bit more dynamic. So if we look at it from like where we started, maybe you start with something like this, then you work towards something where you're getting a little bit more actual motion like the band move that you showed. Yeah, sure and then you're, you're, you're finishing off the job with a lot of the warm up stuff that Dr. Wood demonstrated. I get it. So we've talked about uh, the anatomy of the shoulder. We've talked about some uh, stroke variations. Obviously we talked a little bit more about the freestyle. Um, Dr. Wood broke down some of the flaws that he sees or he's seen that cause irritations and tissues around the, uh, you know, the shoulder mainly. Um, obviously there's more irritations that can go into the neck and into other, other places. Uh, we focus a little bit more on the shoulder because that's what we see the most. Um, and then we, lock, then we again looked at like some uh, correctives that could uh, help potentially uh, help some of these things uh, get better. Now there's always a uh, time and a place when correctives you know, they need to be progressed, they need to be individualized to the, the person, and that's why we all are docs. If we had, you know, a sheet that we could just write, okay, if they come in with this, give them this, then uh, we might not have jobs for very long. But um, if you guys need help figuring your shoulders out, uh, whether it's swimming, overhead, 
uh, throwing, anything that requires your, your shoulders to kind of come up. Um, I think we have a couple of a pretty smart docs here that can help you out with that stuff. So don't be afraid to reach out. We have free discovery sessions. We have things that uh, you can reach out to and just ask questions to us. Uh, but if, if you do have those questions, 702-558-2151. We can't get over far enough to show the phone number. And it's okay. on elevatesph.com. So uh, reach out to us if you guys have any questions, okay? Anything else from the docs? No. Dr. Wood, welcome to the Doc Talks. Thank you. Dr. Wood will be on. He's going to be on uh, occasionally. He's going to come probably every three or four weeks uh, and spit some knowledge with us because um, he's at different locations. we got him working. So uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Take care.